the escape ranger is here and oh, i just i can't even talk about it right now i'm so excited <laughs> this to my fit. I'm probably going to turn the handlebars up some more and then angle it back so I get a, a much higher sit and then I need to put on the long seat post. But right now I'm just kind of giddy about just getting it out and riding it around. And whatever you may have thought would have been the result of this uh, battery right down the center of gravity, well you were right and it is awesome. Uh, this thing is not off balance at all and as you can see man, so this isn't a review video, but I definitely wanted to show you guys what it's capable of. What I'm really after is just show you the inside. I'm going to show you the controller part, and you can see the wiring setup. You've got a lot more going on with this bike, especially with the turn signal, the light switch, the horn, etc. So it's worthwhile seeing inside. I just like doing that kind of stuff. So that's what the plan is. I'm going to go ahead and open up this bike, show you inside the controller compartment, and let you see what's going on inside the Escape E-Bikes Ranger 72 volt, 3000 watt, 20 inch by four rear hub motor e-bike. This thing is amazing. Let's get to it. crazy all right now to the show <laughs> we are going to just get into the controller compartment uh, this is after the first test ride we did it right after it rained so she's a little dusty but i uh, wanted to take you guys in and let you see what's going on inside of here Right, we are in. Now, first things first, you're going to see the balancer is going to be stacked up front with everything. Now, this thing is particular because it connects to the controller, which looks like this. Now, the connections are actually pole, and there are two um, connections for the Bafang controller where you actually put the screws through in it and it fastens the wire to the poles on the controller itself. And you'll see that as I pull this out. So straight wire connections. You are looking at, I believe, 12 AWG wiring for this balancer. And it is a 10 to 150 volt DC uh, max 60 amp current. Now that's the same max as the battery, so these are paired to the battery, so keep that in mind too. Now here you go, this is the balancer setup. All of your power connections are pretty clean and pretty basic. Uh, nothing amiss here in terms of how it is set up. This controller is the 60 amp Bafang version, which we are happy to see. So. All of your components are matched up from a 60 amp controller to your 60 amp current limit on your balancer and your XT90 connections. Now you do have on here, um, you have your turn signals as well as your horn, as well as your light switch. So that is there as well. There are no battery monitoring metrics on there. So keep that in mind, but you do, I believe have other sensors 
off of the motor itself. So these are very fine wires, so you're gonna to wanna to look out for that. I believe this is one of the earlier models and they will be moving towards uh, cleaning this up as necessary in the future. So just keep that in mind. But very nice, very nice indeed. Torque sensor and cadence on this bike that allows you to utilize it to your preference, which is good for a guy like me. But I have to tell you that uh, with these Bethang controllers, I am fast becoming a torque sensor guy. Now that may change with the size of the bike at 20 inches, but uh, we shall see. So here are your phase wires for your motor and they are covered with this plastic covering. Now they say this thing on the Magicians is, uh, it's got an IPX rating of proof, uh, but this does not feel waterproof to me. And I'm not sure if Escape has advertised it as such, but there's never a point in time when you would find me uh, risking that with my e-bikes regardless, so keep that in mind as well. If you guys are thinking you want to waterproof something, you're going to need to come up with some concepts and ideas. You would have to seal out this compartment along the edges. Uh, there's also a hole in the bottom, but it's a, it's a nice vent. You don't want to just seal off your bike and then forget that you've done it and then suddenly have to come back and deal with some problems, especially as it is due to moisture. It's XT60s for your connectors here. Um, that is pretty common. That's definitely something that I would want to see. And then, as I was telling you before, coming off of the balancer and you see it right there, it says out. Now that out is actually here to the controller and those two controller pins are screw mounted to the Bafang controller. So uh, a little bit different than plugging straight into an adapter if I was doing a mod and I had no other recourse, I would probably just cut these ends off and then modify and put XT90s on the other end for it. Definitely don't want to mess anything up as we're pushing it back in. There we go. It felt like a good seat right there. And get these wires on back inside. And there they go. So that'll sit flat. Let's go ahead and have a look at this motor cable. It looks to be the standard issue. right around the edges right here there's four and four and those are your connectors up top is how you maintain your alignment and that is actually aligned with the arrow on the head of the motor cable let's go ahead and get that back together I'm just always cautious about making sure that no wires are possibly going to get pinched inside this thing. So you just always just monitor it, you know. If you feel like it's off, don't force it. Um, now the rest of it is I like to hand tighten these screws because of the orientation of the plate and the screw holes that you are screwing into. It's easy to strip them and this stuff, aluminum, it just makes it all that much more difficult to deal with if you mess it up. So it's best to do it by hand first and then tighten it down. All right, let's go ahead and have a look inside. Or at least a look at the batteries themselves. 
Now this battery is a 60 amp battery, 72 volt, 15 amp hours. Right there. 15 amp hours on this battery. Looks to be a five pin. So dependent on the layout of the battery itself and internally, there may only be two active pins or four, but there's only a positive and negative connection, leaving your red and black wire at the XT60. Now this one is 20 amp hours. So 72 volt, 20 amp hours, 60 amp battery. So that's your nominal state. One thing I did want to say on both of these, the connector for the charger, let me go ahead and put this back in and I'll show you. The connector for the charger is actually the Reension three pin. So that interestingly enough will work with a wired e-bike so the scout warrior and the predator those connections they are using the re-engine three pin as well it does not work with the magician connector for the charger now all of those little tiny wires inside were definitely associated to this control cluster up here on the dash and that relates to the push button or switches for the main components including the light and you can actually see it turn on on the plants there you have the horn which is inside the back of the light casing and then you have the turn signals so there is no actual indicator on the turn signals for you on the dash so far as I can see, or at least on the display. So you're going to have to remember that those things are on, but they are there. There it is, guys. I just wanted to let you have a sneak peek inside. I have only ridden this thing on the intro to this video and the test ride after the live unboxing, which Good Lord, I need to apologize for the audio on that. It was not connected, but definitely wanted to let you see inside what's going on. Dual battery connection. 60 amp is the name of the game here, and all the components are matched for that current limit. So we are super excited. Uh, this thing did pull away from a 58 amp Magician Alpha batch one so it does have the ota update but if that gives you any idea of what's going on with this bike and the buffang setup that is the one that'll tell you just what you're gonna get when you're riding the escape e-bikes ranger so if you're curious about the wattage on this thing let's go ahead and do the calculation uh, and a fully charged 72 volt battery is 84 volts. We'll multiply that by 60 amps, which is your max current output. And you get 5,040. So it's on the button. We really appreciate that too. So max current 5,000. So the advertisement and the current for the bike are on par for what you need. And it is not overstated or overdone. The numbers are on the money. Actually, it's the bike is capable of more wattage than they are putting on the ratings for it from escape e-bikes on their website so we are pretty happy about that too good job joel appreciate you my man thank you very much but we got products we got all the videos to come the reviews the installs everything and we are really really happy just to have this bike and the more i ride it the more it makes me smile and the make makes me want to ride it even more we're going to leave a link for this product in the description below, as well as some adjoining products that you may want in accessory for your Escape Ranger. And we appreciate utilizing those links to help keep this channel going. If you haven't already, give us a like and subscribe on YouTube. It is our primary. And if you're in the area, check out eBikes of Tampa Bay, Florida. Get in that Facebook group, make an event, and go for a ride with your friends. We'll talk to you next time.